Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to learn how to take a single image and turn it into a stunning HDR landscape using some basic masking and some sliders inside of our tone and color. So let's jump in and get started. So here we are inside On One Photo Raw, and we're going to start with this image. Now, when modifying images into an HDR look, I would definitely recommend shooting in RAW. RAW just gives you a little bit more power when it comes to modifying different tonality sliders, and so it's easier for you to pull out on the shadowy tones and also recover blown out highlights if you need to. So just a recommendation, if you do love shooting in JPEG, you can get that HDR look, but it's gonna be a bit more difficult and you may get some noise in your foreground. So to start out with this edit, the first thing I wanna do is bring in some detail to our foreground. We don't have a lot going on here. We know there's a lot happening in here, but we can't see it all. So let's head over to our tone and color, and I'm first gonna pull up on my shadow tones. And you can see that by pulling up on those shadow tones, I can see a lot more detail in here in my foreground area. Then I'll head over and I'll pull up on my contrast a little bit to make sure that everything has some detail and some punch to it. Then I'll head down to my midtones. I'll pull those up a little bit, probably about right there, till it's really bright. And then I'm gonna pull back on my exposure. Now pulling back on the exposure is basically going to darken this sky area a little bit more. And it's going to make sure that this area within our frame isn't blown out and overexposed and we can see these details on the top of the trees here. That looks like a pretty good foundational look for the shot. We can always go in and add in contrast later down the line, but for just starting off, I think this looks pretty good. So what I wanna do now is I wanna go in here and I want to mask out this sky area and just add in a little bit more of an interesting cloud structure. There's not really any clouds up in here, so if we went in and added some nice clouds in here, I think it would add a little bit more liveliness to the scene. So first things first, I need to mask out this area from this base layer. So I'm gonna head over to my layers. I'll just double click this layer. I'll rename it base. Then I'll click on my masking options here. And before I select my mask, I'm just gonna hit view right here. And then I'll head over and choose lumen. Now when you choose a luminosity mask, it's going to target the brighter areas in your image first. Basically a luminosity mask allows you to use bright and dark tones in your image and mask with them. So I'm basically targeting this sky area up top here because it's the brightest area in my photo. Well before we swap this mask so that it's all white on our foreground, we're gonna modify our level slider over here so that we're strictly applying this mask to the top area of our scene. So I'm gonna head over to my level slider, and the level slider works pretty easily. Now, we have this far left point, which is our shadows, we have our middle point, which is our midtones, and then we have our highlights to the far right. Now, to remove any of these tones from your mask, pull right on that point. So if I wanna remove shadow tones from my mask, I can pull right on this, and you can see it's removing those shadow tones from the mask area, and it's applying this white area strictly to the top. And I can do the same thing with my midtones. I can pull these to the right and that will remove some of those midtone areas in there. And then I can just keep doing that with my shadow tones a little bit, my midtones a little bit more. And then we're gonna pull our highlight point all the way to the left and that's gonna add in highlights. And you can see it just strictly applies that white to the top area of our scene. So now if we view our image here, we only have that white sky area. But if we select invert to swap the mask, now we just have our foreground. So now that we've masked out our sky area, let's add in a new one by just selecting this plus button and to access my skies, I'm gonna click on the Extras tab. I'll go into On One Extras. I'll go to Backgrounds, down to Skies, and then we'll scroll down to Skies, 
46. So now we have this sky layer on our image. I'm just going to hit V on my keyboard so that I can move it around and transform it a little bit. And I'm going to head up to my top menu here and I'm going to flip this so that the sun is on this left side of the image. Then I'm just going to place this sun similar to the area where it's bright on those mountains so it looks like the sun is blasting in and making all of this area glow. And then I'll just make these edges a bit bigger by pulling on them. Like that. And then I'll head over to my layers and I'll drag that sky layer below my base layer like that. Now obviously that looks ridiculous and it doesn't look very natural. So we need to head into our develop tab for this sky layer and we need to pull up on some of these tonality sliders. So let's just pull up on our exposure a bit. Then we'll pull up on our midtones. Maybe leave our shadow tones alone. Add in a little bit of contrast like that. And I think that looks pretty good. We can maybe pull up on the whites just a little bit. Just so it's not so dull and flat in our image. And then I'm going to head down to my color area and I'm just going to pull up on the temperature to warm the sky area up a bit. To give it that kind of golden hour glow. So now that we've masked out the sky, added in a new sky, what we need to do is we need to merge these layers together and then give it that final HDR look. So let's go up to our layers. I'm going to right click and I'll choose new stamped layer. That's going to duplicate those two layers and then merge them together into one composite layer. So now with this base composite, I'll just rename it composite. So now with this composite layer, I'm just going to do a little bit of fine tuning inside of my tone and color. Even though we've merged these two layers together, we still have all of the raw processing capabilities with those two layers. So I'm going to head down here with my composite layer selected and I'm going to add in a little bit of contrast. I'm going to pull up on the whites just a hair and maybe just a mid-tone boost like that. I think that looks pretty good. Perfect. So now we can head into our effects tab. I'll add a filter and let's add the HDR look filter. So just by adding that filter, you can see all it does to the image. It really makes everything pop out and it gives it that high dynamic range. So now if I turn off this HDR look filter, you can see it's working really well to bring out all of these details and tonalities in our foreground, but it's crunching up the sky a little bit too much. So let's head into our layers and grab our base layer We'll go into the masking options and I'm going to copy that mask that we made earlier for our foreground. Then let's head back into that composite layer. I'll go to that HDR look filter. I'll go into the masking options and I'll just paste that mask. Now, because we were using a luminosity mask, it's going to base this luminosity on the tones in the image that it's applied to. So it's a little bit different now if we view the mask. But that's not a big deal. All we have to do is go in and modify our level slider a bit. So I'll just head down here and I'll just modify these points. Until most of them are off the sky. It doesn't have to be too exact. All we want to do is remove the HDR look from our sky area. So now I'll head over to my HDR look and I'll select view so that I can view my image. And now if I turn this off and on, that HDR look is only applied to our foreground area and our sky area is protected so that it's not all crunched up. 
Now let's go into our develop tab. I just want to do a couple things inside of my tone and color. I'm going to go down to my temperature and I'm going to warm it up just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to head back into my effects and I'm going to modify my HDR look. So inside of this HDR look filter, you can modify all of the different things that give your photos that high dynamic range style. Now in here, this compression slider is going to balance your shadow and highlight detail. So if I pull this up really high, you can see that I'm revealing basically every tone in my image. I typically like this at 100, it looks pretty good right there. And then we have detail, which is going to make your image pop with micro contrast and structure. So I can pull that up, but again, Keeping it at its default is pretty nice. And then we have some similar tonality sliders in here. So we have our clarity, which is basically just structure. And then we have our highlights, shadows, vibrance, glow, and grunge. One thing I want to do is just pull up on my vibrance a little bit to give my foreground some color. And then I'm going to pull up on this glow just a little bit. And that's going to add in a little bit of contrast into that foreground area. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard now, I really like what we've done to this image to give it that HDR look. And if I head up to my layers, I'll turn off this composite layer, and then I'll head into this base layer, I'll reset all the layer properties, and then we'll reset any modifications. So we've started with this photograph and we've turned it into this image. And one thing I might do in this composite just real quick to fine tune things is I'm gonna go into this HDR look filter right there. I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard. I'm gonna switch my paint mode by holding down shift and hitting X. I'm going to lower this brush size a bit, and then I'm just going to brush on the edges of the tops of these mountains so that it takes off that halo. Just like that. That looks way better. So by adding that detail, we're just adding in, you know, more contrast, which can make the tops of mountains and things like that really halo out and look glowy, which you don't really want because it looks fake. So just keep an eye out for that whenever you're editing, but I think that looks a lot better like that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a bit about using layers, some masking, and different tone and color sliders that you can use on your next photographs. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated whenever we drop new videos. Stay safe, have a great rest of your week, everybody.